but I was also there for the CCSBI treatment, and I've seen everything that she's done since. Half the man I used to be, I've lost like 12 pounds because of it, I can't keep up to her anymore. But uh, uh, I'll let her cover all of that, so without further ado, Christine Fitzgerald. Nice to see you all again. I've met a few of you. Some of you, today's the first day, so it's it's great to see you guys here. Thanks for coming. That's absolutely awesome to see the support. Basically, what my presentation here is going to be is just a little overview of why I'm here. So we'll start and see where it goes. So I'll bring you back to 2008. That's where the story starts. Um, CCSVI came and kicked me in the butt really hard. Um, I ended up in the hospital for a few days and I had um, half my body taken away for a little while. It was awkward. Um, it was the right side, it was gone. It decided to not work anymore. I couldn't lift up teacups, I couldn't write, I couldn't brush my hair. Energy was definitely gone, so that wasn't much fun. I spent a lot of time in bed. It sucked. So, anyways. That's where it started. After that, I got diagnosed, and the next two years were very difficult. I went through the typical way that patients were processed with MS. Oh, you have the disease, but guess what? There's no cure. Good luck with that. So that's not really a, a happy way to learn anything. So they said, but you can take these drugs. So I tried a couple drugs. I started with Avonex, which was an intramuscular injection once a week. Uh, I wouldn't say it did anything for me, because things progressively got worse over those two years. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about it was, it goes in your muscles, so it's a really deep needle. And after that, if you don't take something to offset the side effects, you end up feeling like you have the flu. That's really hard to do if you have to get up for work the next day. So I tried that for a year, and then the doctor decided, okay, we'll change it up, because that's obviously not working for you. I had a couple relapses, despite taking the drugs. So after that, I moved to Copaxone. Copaxone. Yes, the daily injection. It's a smaller amount, and it was every single day, so you have to find a place that's squishy enough and pop it in there. Not so much fun. Giving yourself needles was something I didn't think I'd have to learn. Unfortunately, it wasn't really my choice. But um, so over the next two years, I was still getting hit. I was still having relapses, and it was still making life difficult. Uh, I still had no energy couldn't do much more. I tried. I tried so hard. Even when I was in a relapse, I tried to get some exercise in. That was entertaining. The doctor thought I was insane. Um, it was possible, just a very lesser degree than usual. So that went along for two years. We heard about Dr. Zamboni's procedure at perfect timing, and I ended up having it right at the two-year mark after my diagnosis. So I'd only been dealing with EMS for two years, which I think is part of the reason why I've so I've been so fortunate in recovering because I didn't have years upon years upon years of my body being stuck to the things that happen when you have the MS. Um, a lot of it's been very recovered, per se. I'm standing in front of you today and I like it. It's good. <laughs> so anyways, what we started doing was research. As soon as we heard about Dr. Zamboni and he had this new procedure, um, we started doing tons of research. I did even more research in the background. I checked out all the doctors, I checked out everything. And we decided to um, go about it in 2010. Hence, World Medicist. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of that company. They are top notch. I got in touch with them and decided on a place to go. There's Mexico, that's where I chose. There was a lot of controversy at the time because different places all around the world were having different results. Oh, they went there and then they died because they came back to Canada and something went wrong and there was no doctor here to deal with them. So that was something that was in my mind when I was deciding where to pick. Um, I did as much research as I could. I checked with my doctor here and said, okay, I understand this is a concern. People going to get this procedure are coming back to Canada and nobody's helping them. Are you going to help me or should I find another doctor? She said, oh, absolutely, I'll help you. Come on back which is awesome. So we got on the plane, flew to Cancun, then we took a bus, if you guys can see on there, all the way to Merida. That was three hours, four hours? 
roughly, it's a distance between here and Calgary. <laughs> Except it's through Mexico, their roads are a little bit different. Or a lot different. <laughs> so lots of stuff to see. But anyways, we got there. This is ADO, it's the bus line we took. It's basically a Greyhound on steroids. It was great. Nice reclining chairs, they offered hot drinks, snacks, you name it. <coughs> then they dropped us off. The only part that kind of made me go, wow, what am I getting myself into, is when they dropped us off that night when we got to Merida, it was dark, and we were on a street somewhere in town. And they said, okay, bye. And we went, okay, where's the hotel? Where are we supposed to go? So we found a, a cab driver, and he linked us up with the hotel. Maison de la Luna. Very nice. Not French, not Mexican, I'm not sure what it is really. Spanish. And that was our hotel room. So it was, it was very nice. And the best part about it was it was right across the street from the hospital, Star Medica. And that's the hospital I was going to get all my treatment in, so it made sense. We had um, some interpreters there. They would talk to us at the hotel and then walk us across the street and take us into the hospital, bring us up to the floor that we had to meet on introduce us to the doctors and get everything set straight. So that was perfect. Those girls were so key in it because they explained everything in English. It was perfect. I brought them, oh no, I got pictures of this when I went. It was, uh, it was my jugulars that were a problem. The one on the left side was the worst. Obviously, if you guys can see in there, one side's really, really skinny compared to the other side. That was that was part of it. And then they did the azagus, or the azygos, however you would like to pronounce it. They did that vein as well. And there's a picture of me right before I went down for the procedure. So, I can see, I look a little bit nervous. Just a little bit. Because nobody in the hospital speaks English. And they give you cards with the English version on the back and the Spanish version on the front. So you can switch it back and forth and hopefully talk to them. And they were, they were really good with it, so it wasn't that big deal, but it was nice to have the little flashcards to pick from. So I went down, and that was the weird part, because I went down into the basement of the hospital. It's where their surgical suite was, which was a little nervous. But um, nobody down there spoke a lick of English at all. Like, not even one word. It was just that they'd come pat your hand and, OK, OK, if that meant anything. But. Uh, they put everything that they needed to. It was good. I was unconscious, so that was good. I know a lot of people that have gone for the procedure haven't been given that medication. They've been given other stuff. But I was unconscious for it, thankfully, so I just forgot about it, which was great. Then I came back up, and you see the difference on my face? I was much happier after. So it was 24 hours, and everything completely changed. Before I went in, I hadn't felt my feet in over a year. It was awkward, hard to walk. Um, energy was gone, like I said, it didn't exist really. It's uh, heat exhaustion, it's hard going down to Mexico when it's plus 34, plus 40, when you can't tolerate the heat. So that was, that was interesting. But I got out of it, and uh, I could feel my feet the next morning. It hadn't even been 12 hours. So that was a really good start to it. And from there, the, the gains just kept adding up, and adding up, and adding up, and adding up. We, uh, we went outside, it was a bit of a trick, because I'm like, okay, how's it going to go? It went perfect, no more heat exhaustion, nothing. So we went snorkeling. It was fun. <laughs> the, um, the most important part of this is, without the procedure, I wouldn't have my life back. And this disease, if you want to call it that, I don't know what you want to call it anymore, because to be quite honest, it is what it is. I like to tuck it back and not acknowledge it as much as I try. It's easier now. But um, <clears throat> when I got diagnosed, everything shut down. After this procedure, it gave me my whole life back. I mean, if I didn't have that, I don't want to know where I'd be right now because I was on a slippery slope and going down and down and down. Thankfully, the disease threw something in there and bounced me right back up. So we went to uh, and tried to do all sorts of stuff, because I was like a little kid at Christmas. I'm like, oh, I can go out and do what? Let's try that. And it was good. The days were long. It didn't bother me. It wasn't like it was before at 9 o'clock. It's like somebody pulled my power plug, and then I was done. Had to go to bed. That was gone. So we enjoyed Mexico as much as we could. We did some snorkeling. 
did some sun tanning, and I'm, I'm not showing you guys this to put anything out there, I'm just showing you to, to verify that I'm not trying to tell you anything that's just going to sound good. Really, and for true, I was out in the sun, I couldn't have done that even a week before, so it's very important. Then when we got back, I decided to do the MS bike ride. I had five, well there were, yeah there were five of us that got together, a bunch of them from work, <coughs> friends, and we did that, I was able to do that, and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a 90 kilometer bike ride in the mountains, it's, you know, it's a little, little. So we did that, it took two days. The second day wasn't so good, I was a little bit tired, but I don't think that was because of the MS, I think that was just from lack of training because I'd been on my butt for so long. I fixed that problem too, by the way. Did she ever? <laughs> <laughs> then the winter came, and I was back on the snowboard. Can't complain. Good days. Best day is a day full of powder. And a little snack at lunch, of course. Maybe a liquid one. <laughs> but then the summer came, and this was last July, I believe. Yeah. Anyways, I decided to join a team in the Sinister Seven race. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. It's like the death race of the South. It's a 148 kilometer race. I didn't do it myself, I did it as a team. My leg was 14 kilometers, and that's the mountain that I ran down to do my part of it. So, <laughs> thankfully, I wouldn't be doing any of this unless I had got some recovery from that procedure. And honestly, right now, it doesn't matter to me how much it costs because it was worth it. It's way better than getting a little car or getting some jewelry or getting something else that was worth every penny. And I just hope that we can work with Chrissy because she's really hard to follow for a presentation just so you guys know. She's doing so much for us. We need to get this in Canada. And that's, that's my main goal. That's why I'm here. Um, I decided to give you guys the website for World Medicist in case you know anybody who might want to get in touch with them. They were fantastic to deal with. Absolutely great. And they're in California, so you don't have to be worried about signing medical forms in another language. It's very straightforward. It's all English. They're so good to talk to. I recommend checking them out for sure if you have the slightest interest. And then there's my email down there. If you guys want to get in touch, I'm more than willing to go for coffee. I love coffee, so if you guys want to go, let's, let's do coffee. Um, how are we doing for time? You good. Sweet. Basically, to sum it up, thank you guys all for coming. It's so good to see your support here today. It's fantastic. And hopefully this will give a little motivation to let you guys know that there's some hope. If we can do a little bit more, everybody can have a good ending. 